Hello everyone, welcome to another Ocean Cast tutorial. It is Tyler and we'll get started. Today I'll be talking about how to install Redmine on a droplet from DigitalOcean. Now Redmine is a very interesting tool that can be used with an entire community of people. So let's go take it up. Let's go take a look here. Okay, so we're gonna head over to redmine.org where we can see what exactly Redmine is. And basically, it's just a project management system, um, and that's kind of what I got to look at, or that's kind of what I feel it is after taking a look at it, and it's just a project management system web application. So let's go ahead and get started by using our host name of our server, and hold on one second, alrighty, and we're going to just get started by putting the host name of Redmine, or whatever you want to use for your server. I just happen to use Redmine. I'm going to select the 512 megabyte select, or 512 megabyte server. Oops, sorry about that, guys. And um, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, and the select region will be just New York 2 or whatever's closer to you in this case. I happen to like New York 2 or 3. Um, no, New York 3 has IPv6 support, which IPv6, uh, actual definition of IPv6 will be coming in a future tutorial here. Um, so let's, I'm just going to go to applications. Now this is the kicker. Like I always say in all my other tutorials, if I click installations, we want to go to applications and then we want to press Redmine. I'm going to enable the virtual IO and I'm going to go ahead and create this droplet. But I happen to have this droplet already created. So I'm just going to pop over here where it's already up and going. So I'm going to go ahead and get my server login information. And why do not I have it yet? Hold on. Well, oh, that's weird. Let me pause this video and get my information out. Okay, so that was weird because I never got the um, droplet on the password on create, but I never created with an SSH key, so that was a little weird. So I'm just going to go ahead with Putty now, and I'm going to uh, type in this IP address or just copy and paste it to speed up the process of entering it. And I'm going to go ahead and open this connection. I'm going to press yes, and usually you won't get this, but it's because I'm creating all my tutorials on the same droplet with the same IP address. Well, it's not the same droplet, but it reserves the IP address for the next time you create a droplet. Usually, um, I always am prompted with that. So I'm going to go ahead and log in as root, and I'm going to use the password I got in my email, and there we go. So now we need to go ahead and actually access Redmine. So if you want to actually use a host name with your server, you're going to have to do a little bit more additional configuration. But first it wants us to enter our current Unix password, so I'm just going to right click because I had that paste in my copy to my, uh, my clipboard. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in my new password that I want to use. Okay, so now I'm logged in. We can see that, or change my password I should say, uh, we see that we have a little bit of information here about what's going on. But first, I want to go over the host name issue if you actually have a host name that you want to use besides the default IP address. And we can go over that right now, too. Usually, this is more for if you have multiple um, hosts on one server. Because if you don't and you have one domain name pointing to this IP address, usually it will serve this IP address as it was the domain name. Um, but it's when you have multiple hosts and everything, stuff can get a little bit confusing. And all this stuff will be mentioned in more detail in a future tutorial will be how to install a LAMP stack or a Ubuntu stack on, well, I mean, not a LAMP stack, but a web server stack. I mean, not a, yeah. So anyway, sorry about all that confusion. So let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. So let's do VI. And first, let's make sure VI is installed. So apt get install vim. Okay, and Vim installed. So we can go ahead and use VI successfully because if you don't make sure Vim is installed, VI and Vim are basically the same thing. Um, but VI will have some weird issues um, if you enter and do some weird stuff. So it's just best to have make sure Vim is installed. So I'm going to do VI and then etc nginx sites enabled and then Redmine. All right, so then we can see the server name. So 80, or we have, yeah, we got, we're listening on port 80 with the server name is RP address, redmine and www.redmine. So usually this host name is supposed to be like uh, your site.com. And then it would automatically add everything how it's supposed to be. But since I did not do it that way, everything's fine, but these really should not be here. Um, so root anyways, server, we're gonna serve out that thing. And then passenger we're going to use, and we're also going to set the client max body size of 10 megabytes. So that's all we really need to go over here. And now let's actually go ahead and escape out of this. All right, so 
Now we're going to go ahead and log into Redmine. So what we're going to do is get this IP address we have here. And I'm going to head over to our trusty old control panel and paste that bad boy in there and press enter. And usually this can take some time depending on um, how new your server is and everything. I've done a couple re I done a couple of tries on this and sometimes this site is really slow. And I also, th I also think that really has to do with the 512 megabyte droplet that it is on. So anyways, we see Redmine is all ready to go here, and we can go ahead and press sign in in the top right hand corner. And we can see that we can log in with admin, and we have to get our password. Now again, this is from a previous tutorial that it's already pre-filled, and it won't be on default. So what I'm going to do here is the lazy way of getting the password. So just select it on if you're in Windows, and right click, and you'll see it down here. So just backspace that up, and go in here and just control V it in, and log in. Okay, so now we can see we're actually logged in as admin, and shebang, it's actually ready to go. You can go ahead and create projects and do all this other stuff that you might want to do with Redmine. That if you already have Redmine, you can um, you already know back basically how all this works. Um, so I'm not fairly familiar with Redmine because I use my own kind of project management system. But if you are familiar with Redmine, you can just take off from here and go to town. But we're not completely over. So if you need to access a different MySQL database, you can do that. So if you already have a configuration done and you're porting this over to another Redmine installation or something, you can go ahead and use that database. So let's take a look at how exactly this works. So we can go to vi root and then my or dot my dot config or conf. And that's actually wrong. It's cnf. Okay, so this is the password of this MySQL database, and if you want to access this MySQL database, I said that wrong, but this is what you, the password of the MySQL database that this is using. So that's all you have to do to install Redmine or use the one-click installation of the Redmine app on Ubuntu. Um, in a future tutorial, I think, actually... I don't really think we'll have a future tutorial on Redmine because, um, well, yeah, we will be about multiple hosts and everything on Redmine. So please check back soon for the Nginx installation or tutorials of how to set up Nginx with multi sites because that will then re rely back to this Redmine installation and everything um, if you want to use Redmine with that. So that's it for this tutorial. I want to thank everybody for watching this. If this tutorial has helped you, please like, comment, and subscribe. Again, please like, comment, and subscribe. And in the description, I have my referral link. And if you press that link, you will receive a $10 credit on sign up. And it also benefits me and helps me be able to make these tutorials. So I want to thank everybody for coming here watching this tutorial. And um, I think that's it. So happy coding.